Rise, my apprentice. The Clone Wars had finally reached its boiling point, with the decisive battle over Coruscant leaving its mark on the galaxy. Anakin Skywalker, freshly returned from saving the Chancellor, piloted his ship down through the smog-covered skies of Coruscant, eager to see Padme again. The weight of the war, the demands of the Jedi Council, and his growing sense of isolation from those around him all seemed to fade whenever he was near her. But today, something felt different, a sense of urgency pulling at his thoughts. As he landed and made his way to the apartment, thoughts of his recent victories were overshadowed by his longing to reunite with Padme. He hadn't seen her since the war began to escalate, and the time apart had become unbearable. Entering their home, he saw her waiting by the window, her hands clasped in front of her. There was a tension in the air that Anakin couldn't place. Padme. He called softly, rushing toward her, his heart lightening at the sight of her. He wrapped her in a tight embrace, feeling her body tremble slightly against his. I missed you so much. She didn't speak immediately, pulling back just enough to look into his eyes. Her gaze was serious, searching his face for the right moment to say what she had been holding in for so long. There's something I need to tell you, Ani. She began, her voice steady, but filled with emotion. It's something I've kept from you, and I, I'm sorry I didn't tell you sooner. I didn't know how. Anakin's brow furrowed, concern flooding him as he searched her face. What is it? You can tell me anything. While you were away, I, I gave birth. The words hit Anakin like a shockwave. He blinked, momentarily unable to process what she had just said. You... you gave birth? Padme nodded, her eyes never leaving his. To twins. A boy and a girl. I couldn't tell anyone. Not even you. I didn't know how you'd react. How this would affect everything. Anakin stood, pacing for a moment as he tried to absorb the enormity of her revelation. His mind raced. Twins. He had children. Two children. Born into a galaxy engulfed in chaos. His breath quickened as he turned back to her. Where are they, Padme? Are they safe? Why didn't you tell me? They're safe with Bail Organa. He's agreed to help us. They're on Alderaan, under his protection, until we can figure out what to do next. I didn't tell you because I was afraid. Afraid of what this would mean for us. For you. The Council? They'd never understand. No one can know about this. Not yet. The Council would expel me. I didn't want to keep them from you, Annie. I was just trying to protect them. And protect you. Bale has promised to keep them hidden until the time is right. I'll resign from the Senate when my term ends, and we can raise them together. Anakin's jaw tightened. The secrecy, the lies, it felt suffocating. But he knew Padme was right. If the Council or Republic found out, everything could fall apart. His fear of losing Padme, and now his children, was stronger than anything he had ever felt. We'll do it your way, but I'll be involved. No one will keep me from them, Padme. No one. She nodded, relief flooding her features as she took his hands in hers. We'll be careful. Together, we'll figure this out. Anakin pulled her into his arms once more, holding her close as the weight of his new reality settled over him. He had saved the Chancellor, won battles in the war, but now the real fight had just begun, protecting his family from a galaxy full of threats while keeping their secret hidden. As they stood there, locked in an embrace, both of them knew that nothing would ever be the same. The path ahead was uncertain, but one thing was clear. Their children were their future, and they would do whatever it took to protect them. Sidious, still confident that his plans are progressing smoothly after Anakin's defeat of Count Dooku reaches out to General Grievous. Unaware of the existence of Anakin's children, Sidious believes that the Jedi Knight is becoming more firmly under his influence. With the final phase of the war in sight, Sidious instructs Grievous to move the Separatist leaders to the remote planet of Mustafar. He sees this as the perfect opportunity to consolidate his power, setting the stage for the war's end and the rise of his new apprentice, completely unaware of the secret that could complicate his plans. The night after his return to Coruscant, Anakin tossed and turned in restless sleep. His mind, usually buzzing with thoughts of the war and his duties as a Jedi, was unusually still. But that stillness didn't last long. Soon, vivid images began to form, terrifying and surreal, yet strangely clear. He saw a peaceful planet, one that he recognized immediately, Alderaan. The sky was bright, the cities bustling with life, and the mountains stretched out in a serene beauty that filled him with a false sense of calm. Then, it all changed. The sky darkened, and suddenly, an explosion rocked the planet. The ground trembled, buildings shattered, and fire engulfed everything in its path. Anakin's heart pounded as he saw the landmass crack, splitting open like a wound. The cries of millions of voices echoed through his mind, and above it all, a sense of overwhelming destruction. In the chaos, he couldn't help but think of his children, hidden on this very planet. Though he couldn't see them, he felt their presence, distant and helpless. 
As the dream faded, a single image remained in his mind, the planet breaking apart, engulfed in flames. Anakin jolted awake, his breath heavy and his skin slick with sweat. He sat up, his mind racing. The vividness of the dream lingered like a heavy cloud, and he felt the same dread and helplessness he had once felt about Padme. He couldn't let this happen, not to his children, not to Alderaan. But what did it mean? Alderaan was peaceful, untouched by the conflict. How could such a disaster happen there? His mind spun, trying to make sense of it. Then, the answer seemed to fall into place. The war. The Clone Wars were tearing the galaxy apart, and if the war continued, no planet, no matter how peaceful, would be safe. The Republic was crumbling under the pressure, and the Jedi seemed no closer to stopping it. In his heart, Anakin made a decision. The dream was a warning, a vision of what would come if the Clone Wars didn't end soon. The war would escalate, reaching even the safest worlds like Alderaan, and his children could be caught in the crossfire. He couldn't let that happen. He needed to end the war. But how? The Jedi were too slow, too mired in their traditions, and the Senate, though Padme was part of it, was bogged down with bureaucracy and infighting. Anakin knew that to protect his family, to bring true peace to the galaxy, he needed more power, power to end the war once and for all. His mind drifted to Palpatine. The Chancellor had always offered him guidance and had often spoken of the need for stronger leadership to bring peace. Maybe Palpatine could help him find the power he needed to ensure the safety of his children. The thought of it brought a sense of clarity, but also conflict. He knew the Jedi would disapprove, but they didn't understand. They couldn't see the future like he could. They didn't know the stakes. He couldn't let their limitations hold him back. Not when the fate of his family, and possibly the galaxy, hung in the balance. Anakin stood and paced, the weight of the dream heavy on his mind. He didn't have much time. The war had to end before the nightmare he had seen became reality. The halls of the Jedi Temple were quiet in the early hours of the morning, but Anakin's mind was anything but. The vision of Alderaan's destruction gnawed at him, its clarity too sharp to ignore. He had seen the future before, his dreams about his mother, then Padme, and each time the visions had come true. This one felt no different. The weight of what he had seen pushed him toward one person who might help him make sense of it, Master Yoda. Stepping into Yoda's dimly lit quarters, Anakin found the ancient Jedi meditating, his small frame still and calm. For a moment, Anakin hesitated, unsure of how to approach the subject, but the urgency in his heart overruled any caution. Master Yoda, he began, his voice quiet but filled with concern. I've had a vision, a dream of the future. Something terrible is going to happen, and I don't know how to stop it. Yoda slowly opened his eyes, studying Anakin for a long moment before speaking. Visions of the future, you see. Anakin nodded, his frustration growing as he recalled the details of the dream. Yes, I saw Alderaan destroyed. Millions of people gone. I could feel the fear, the pain, my... He cut himself off, realizing the danger of revealing too much. Yoda's eyes narrowed slightly at the pause, but he continued without pressing. The future, always in motion, it is. Clear your vision may seem, but certain it is not. Anakin shook his head, the vision too real in his mind to dismiss. But it felt real, just like when I dreamed about my mother, or about- He stopped again, unable to bring himself to mention Padme. Yoda's gaze softened. Fear of loss, a path to the dark side, it is. Focused on the future, the present you may miss. Trust in the Force you must. Let go of your fear, young Skywalker. Anakin clenched his fists, trying to contain the rising frustration. He had heard these teachings before, but they did nothing to ease the dread he felt. But what if this future comes true? What if I don't do something now to stop it? Yoda sighed softly, his voice calm but firm. Emotion, the future is. Seen clearly. And it never is. What you fear, not always what will be. Let go, you must. Anakin's heart sank. The words were meant to soothe, but they didn't address the urgency of what he had seen. How could he let go when the lives of his children and the galaxy were at stake? I understand, Master. Anakin said finally, though his mind still churned with doubts. He bowed and turned to leave, his thoughts far from settled. Yoda's advice had given him no concrete answers, only vague reassurances about the uncertainty of the future. But Anakin couldn't shake the feeling that this vision was a warning, a warning he couldn't afford to ignore. As he left Yoda's quarters, Anakin's resolve only deepened. If the Jedi wouldn't help him, he would find another way to ensure that what he saw never came to pass. The weight of Yoda's words still clung to Anakin as he made his 
way to the Chancellor's office. The advice he'd received from the Jedi Master had left him unsatisfied and frustrated. Yoda's insistence on letting go of fear and uncertainty did nothing to address the urgency Anakin felt. The dream of Alderaan's destruction lingered like a dark cloud in his mind, and he couldn't shake the belief that decisive action was needed. If the Jedi wouldn't give him the answers he sought, then perhaps Palpatine, the leader of the Republic, would. Entering the Chancellor's grand office, Anakin felt a brief sense of relief as Palpatine greeted him warmly. The Chancellor always had a way of making him feel valued, of listening to him without the judgment or detachment that the Jedi often displayed. Anakin, Palpatine said with a smile, gesturing for him to sit. It's good to see you. How are you holding up after everything on Coruscant? Anakin sat down, his frustration still bubbling beneath the surface. I've had a vision, he said without preamble. Alderaan destroyed, millions of lives lost. I tried to speak with Master Yoda, but all he told me was that the future is uncertain, that I should let go of my fear. His tone was sharp, the disappointment clear. Palpatine leaned forward, concern etched across his face. That must be difficult, especially when you've had such visions before. Visions that have come true. He paused for a moment, as if choosing his words carefully. You want to protect the galaxy, Anakin. You want to end this war and bring peace. But it seems the Jedi, do they truly understand the urgency of the situation? Anakin's eyes narrowed slightly. They say they do, but they're too focused on their traditions. They want to be cautious, to sit back and wait. Meanwhile, people are dying. Palpatine nodded, his expression thoughtful. I understand your frustration, Anakin. The Jedi, they've grown distant, haven't they? From the people, from the true heart of the Republic. Their loyalty to the Republic seems to be faltering. I can see it in their actions. Sometimes I wonder if they trust democracy at all anymore. Anakin looked up sharply. What do you mean? Palpatine sighed, standing up and walking to the large window overlooking the cityscape of Coruscant. There have been murmurs among the council, rumors that they no longer trust me or the Senate to lead the Republic effectively. I believe they are planning to seize control, to act in their own interest rather than in the interest of democracy. Anakin frowned, feeling a growing sense of unease. The Jedi aren't like that. They wouldn't- Wouldn't they? Palpatine interrupted, turning to face him. Think about it, Anakin. Their actions are becoming more and more secretive. They keep things from you, from me, from the Senate. They speak of peace. But are they doing enough to end the war? Or are they merely prolonging it, waiting for the right moment to take power? The word struck a chord in Anakin. His frustration with the Jedi's caution and secrecy had been building for some time. He wanted peace. He wanted the war to end. But the Jedi seemed to be holding him back. And now Palpatine was voicing the very doubts he had been wrestling with. I need your help, Anakin. Palpatine said, his voice soft but persuasive. The Republic needs strong, decisive leadership now more than ever. The Jedi must be united with the Senate, not working against it. That's why I'm asking you to be my personal representative on the Jedi Council. Anakin blinked, surprised. The Council? But I'm not a master. They wouldn't- They will, Palpatine said firmly. With my backing, they cannot refuse. Your voice needs to be heard, Anakin. You're not just a Jedi. You're a symbol of what the Republic can be. Together, we can bring an end to this war. We can ensure that the galaxy never has to face the kind of devastation you've seen in your dreams. Anakin sat in silence for a moment, the weight of Palpatine's words sinking in. He had always respected the Chancellor, admired his willingness to act decisively. And now, with the vision of Alderaan still haunting him, the idea of being in a position to influence the Council directly, to help end the war from the inside, was hard to resist. I'll do it, Anakin said finally, his voice filled with determination. I'll represent you on the council. Palpatine smiled, satisfied. Good. Together, we will bring peace to the galaxy, Anakin. The Jedi, the Senate, the Republic, they must all work together under one vision, and you will help ensure that happens. 
The tension in the Jedi Council chamber was palpable the moment Anakin walked in. He could feel the weight of their disapproval even before a word was spoken. As he stood before the Council, he saw the stern faces of the Masters, their eyes betraying a mixture of suspicion and unease. Palpatine's request had clearly unsettled them. They didn't like the idea of the Republic's leader meddling in what they considered Jedi matters, and Anakin knew it. But his focus wasn't on their reservations, it was on ensuring his voice was heard. Mace Windu was the first to speak, his tone as cool and measured as ever. The Chancellor has requested that you be his personal representative on this council, Anakin. A most unusual request. Anakin held his ground, standing tall as he replied, The Chancellor believes my presence here will help bring an end to the war. I want the same thing as you, to bring peace to the galaxy. The council exchanged glances, clearly uneasy with the situation. Anakin could see the hesitation in their eyes, the way they seemed to be weighing their options. Finally, Yoda spoke, his voice soft but firm. Appoint you to the council, we will, but a master you will not be. Anakin blinked. In the past, such a declaration would have stung deeply. He would have felt the rejection keenly, knowing that becoming a master meant access to deeper knowledge, to the answers he once thought he needed. But now, in this moment, the title of master didn't matter as much. What mattered was having a seat at the table, having a say in the decisions that would bring an end to the war. He didn't need to be a master to achieve that. His expression remained steady as he replied, Thank you, masters. I will do my best to serve the council and the republic. The room remained tense. Mace Windu's eyes narrowed slightly as he studied Anakin's reaction. You understand, Anakin, that this is an unprecedented situation. The Chancellor's involvement in our affairs, it makes the Council uneasy. You will sit with us, but your loyalty must be to the Jedi first. Anakin nodded, though inside the Council's reluctance still rankled him. Of course. All I want is to end the war and bring peace to the galaxy. The Council exchanged another set of cautious glances. Obi-Wan, who had remained silent up until now, finally spoke, his voice softer, more personal. Anakin, we know how much you want to see the war end. We all do. But be mindful of your decisions. There are many forces at play here. Anakin gave a tight nod, understanding Obi-Wan's concern, but still feeling resolute in his path. I understand, Master. I'm ready to do whatever it takes. Yoda's gaze lingered on Anakin for a moment longer before he finally nodded. Thank you. To the council you belong. With that, the meeting was over. As Anakin left the chamber, he couldn't help but feel a sense of accomplishment. He had a seat on the council, a voice in the room where decisions were made. That was what mattered. Being a master, it could wait. The war had to end first. The late afternoon sun cast long shadows across the Jedi Temple as Anakin stood on one of its many balconies, looking out over the sprawling cityscape of Coruscant. He had just come from the council meeting, still processing the mixed emotions of being granted a seat but denied the rank of master. A part of him was frustrated but his focus remained on his goal, ending the war and ensuring the safety of the people he cared about. But his thoughts were interrupted by the familiar sound of Obi-Wan's footsteps behind him. Anakin. Obi-Wan's voice was calm, but there was a heaviness in his tone that immediately put Anakin on edge. He turned to face his former master, who stood there with his arms crossed, his expression unusually grave. What is it, master? Anakin asked, sensing that something more was coming. Obi-Wan sighed softly and stepped closer. The council has another task for you, something that wasn't mentioned in the meeting earlier. He paused, his eyes searching Anakin's face for any hint of understanding. They want you to spy on the Chancellor. Anakin blinked his body tensing at the words. Spy on the Chancellor? His voice was laced with disbelief, anger simmering just beneath the surface. Why? He's been nothing but loyal to the Republic. He's trying to end this war, just like all of us. Why would they ask me to betray him? Obi-Wan stepped closer, his voice remaining steady but firm. The Council is concerned about the Chancellor's growing influence and his reluctance to give up the emergency powers granted to him during the war. They believe he may have other motives. Anakin's jaw clenched as he shook his head. Palpatine is a good man. He's done more for the Republic than anyone else. He's always been a friend to me, and now the Jedi want me to go behind his back. Obi-Wan sighed again, his expression softening slightly as he looked at Anakin. Anakin, I understand how you feel. I know your relationship with the Chancellor is complicated. But this isn't about friendship. The Council is suspicious of his intentions and they need someone close to him to find out the truth. They chose you because he trusts you. Anakin's frustration bubbled to the surface as he turned away, pacing toward the edge of the balcony. So now I'm supposed to betray him? After everything he's done for the Republic, for me? 
This isn't right, Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan stepped forward, his voice firm but gentle. It's not me asking you to do this, Anakin. It's the Council. They're concerned and they need your help. Anakin's anger flared. The Council doesn't trust him. They don't trust me either. That's why they won't make me a master, isn't it? They think I'm too close to him. Obi-Wan placed a hand on Anakin's shoulder, trying to calm him. This isn't about trust. It's about the safety of the Republic. We need to be sure that Palpatine is still acting in the best interests of the people. Anakin pulled away, shaking his head. I can't do this, Obi-Wan. I can't go behind his back. Anakin turned and walked away, leaving Obi-Wan worried for his well-being. The Grand Opera House hummed with activity as the performance on stage unfolded. Anakin made his way through the dimly lit corridors, his mind still churning with frustration and uncertainty. The Jedi Council's request for him to spy on the Chancellor weighed heavily on his conscience. Palpatine had been nothing but loyal to him, and now the Council was asking him to betray that trust. Anakin entered the Chancellor's private box, finding Palpatine seated comfortably, watching the performance below. Anakin. Palpatine greeted warmly, a smile crossing his face. I'm glad you could join me. Anakin sat down, the tension in his body apparent. Chancellor, he replied, though his mind was far from the performance. He couldn't shake the uncomfortable feeling of the council's request. Palpatine, as if sensing this, turned his gaze toward Anakin, his eyes filled with concern. You seem troubled, my friend. Palpatine said softly, his tone almost paternal. Is something on your mind? Anakin hesitated, but the frustration inside him bubbled to the surface. The Jedi Council, he began, his voice tight. They've asked me to do something that, that goes against my loyalty. Palpatine remained silent for a moment, his expression unreadable. Then, slowly, he nodded, as if unsurprised. I see, he said quietly. I've sensed that the Jedi have grown wary of me, and perhaps even of you. It was only a matter of time before they tried to turn you against me. Anakin's fists clenched. It's not right. You've done everything for the Republic, for democracy, and yet they treat you like an enemy. They're asking me to betray someone I trust. Palpatine turned to face him fully, his voice filled with sympathy. It's a cruel position they've put you in, Anakin. You're loyal. You've always done your duty to the Republic, and yet the Jedi would ask you to act against a friend. They fear what they cannot control, even you. Anakin frowned, feeling the truth in Palpatine's words. The Council had never fully trusted him, not enough to make him a master, not enough to include him in their true plans. And now, they were using him for their own ends, playing him as a pawn. I don't understand why they're doing this, Anakin said, his frustration growing. They've always preached about peace, about trust, but now it feels like they don't trust anyone, not even me. Palpatine leaned back in his seat, his voice taking on a contemplative tone. The Jedi are afraid, Anakin. Afraid of losing their power. Afraid of the future. They cling to their dogma, their traditions, while the galaxy burns around them. They've forgotten what it means to bring peace, to end suffering. Anakin looked at him, his brow furrowed. Do you really think they're trying to take control? Palpatine gave a soft, sad smile. I do. The Jedi have lost their way, Anakin. They see themselves as the keepers of peace, but in truth they've become blinded by their own desire for control. And now they see me, and anyone who stands with me, as a threat to that control. Anakin's heart pounded. The Council's actions were beginning to make more sense, but in the worst way. He had always trusted the Jedi, believed in their mission, but lately their decisions had felt wrong. Palpatine continued, his voice soft but powerful. You and I, Anakin, we are alike. We both want the same thing. To bring an end to this war, to bring true peace to the galaxy. But the Jedi, they're holding you back. They fear what you're capable of. They fear what you could become. Anakin shifted uncomfortably. What do you mean? Palpatine turned his gaze back to the stage, his voice lowering as if he were telling a great secret. Have you ever heard the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? Anakin frowned, shaking his head. Palpatine smiled faintly. It's not a story the Jedi would tell you. Darth Plagueis was a Dark Lord of the Sith, so powerful and wise, he could use the Force to influence the midichlorians to create life, to stop those he cared about from dying. 
Anakin's eyes narrowed, though the words didn't carry the same weight as they would have in the past. His fears of losing Padme had subsided now that his children were safely hidden on Alderaan. But still, Palpatine's tale was intriguing. Palpatine continued, his voice calm, almost mesmerizing. The dark side of the Force is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural. Anakin looked at him, confused. Is it possible to learn this power? Palpatine turned his gaze back to Anakin, his eyes gleaming with intent. Not from a Jedi. You see, the Jedi fear this kind of power because it gives one control. Control over life, control over the galaxy's future. That is the power to bring order, the power to end this war. Anakin's mind raced. The story of Plagueis was fascinating. But Palpatine had hit on the deeper issue, the Jedi's fear of change, their reluctance to embrace the power needed to truly end the conflict. Palpatine, on the other hand, understood. He saw the same things Anakin did. Palpatine leaned in slightly, his voice quiet and steady. The Jedi have placed you in an impossible position, Anakin. They've asked you to betray your trust in me, to act against a friend, because they fear you. They fear the power you could have. Anakin felt a tightness in his chest. The Jedi had put him in this position, forcing him to choose between his loyalty to the Republic and his duty to the Order. But Palpatine was right. The Jedi didn't trust him, and they didn't understand the lengths he was willing to go to end the war. Palpatine's voice softened, almost sympathetic. You deserve better, Anakin. You deserve to be trusted, not used. I would never ask you to spy on a friend. I would never betray your trust. Anakin sat in silence, the words sinking in. The Council had betrayed him by asking him to betray the Chancellor. Palpatine, on the other hand, had always been straightforward with him, always supportive. As the opera continued in the background, Anakin felt the weight of the decision pressing down on him. The Jedi didn't trust him, but Palpatine? Palpatine understood. The galaxy stood on the brink of a final, decisive moment as events began to unfold on multiple fronts. Master Yoda made his way to the Wookiee homeworld to aid in their defense against the Separatists. The battlefronts had expanded, and with the Wookiees being vital allies, Yoda's presence there was crucial. His wisdom and leadership were needed as the war raged on, but even in the heat of battle, Yoda could sense a disturbance in the Force. The future was clouded, and something darker was on the horizon. At the same time, Obi-Wan Kenobi was dispatched to the distant world of Utapau. Intelligence had suggested that General Grievous, the elusive leader of the Separatist armies, had taken refuge there. The Council had entrusted Obi-Wan with the mission to confront and eliminate Grievous, hoping that the death of the Separatist commander would help bring a swift end to the war. As Obi-Wan's starfighter landed on the barren, rocky surface of Utapau, he prepared for the confrontation that could shift the balance of the war. Meanwhile, back on Coruscant, Anakin Skywalker wrestled with his inner turmoil. The events of the past few days weighed heavily on him. Him. The Jedi Council's mistrust, their request to spy on Palpatine, and his growing doubts about his place within the Order all clouded his thoughts. Sitting in the quiet sanctuary of their apartment, Anakin opened up to Padme, who sat by his side, worry etched across her face. I don't know what to think anymore, Padme, Anakin admitted, his voice strained. The Council, they don't trust me, and I feel like I'm betraying everything the Jedi stand for by wanting more. More power, more control. A Jedi is supposed to be selfless, but I feel guilty because deep down, I want the power to fix things, to end this war, to protect you and our children. Padme reached for his hand, her eyes full of compassion. Anakin, you've always been driven by your desire to help others. There's nothing wrong with wanting to end the war and protect the people you care about, but you have to be careful. Power? It can consume even the best of us. Anakin nodded, but his thoughts were far from resolved. He could feel the pull. Palpatine's words echoed in his mind. The Chancellor had spoken of the Jedi's fear, their reluctance to embrace the power necessary to bring peace. And now, the Council's actions only deepened Anakin's sense of isolation. He felt like a tool, not a trusted member of the Order. But across the galaxy, another shadow loomed, threatening to disrupt everything Palpatine had set into motion, Maul. On Mandalore, Ahsoka Tano, Anakin's former apprentice, had tracked down the ex-Sith, 
Now leading the remnants of the Shadow Collective, Maul had become a dangerous wildcard, and though no longer a Sith, he possessed knowledge that could unravel Palpatine's carefully laid plans. Maul knew the truth, that Palpatine was Darth Sidious, the puppet master behind the Clone Wars. Palpatine, sensing the danger Maul posed, knew he had to act quickly. Time was running out. His window for executing the final phase of his plan was drawing near, but first, Maul had to be neutralized. Palpatine orchestrated a tactical strike, issuing Order 66 to a small group of clones stationed on Mandalore under the guise of rooting out the last remnants of Separatist influence. The true goal, however, was chaos. As the clones turned against the Jedi still on Mandalore, all hell broke loose. The chaos gave Maul a chance to either escape or be killed. Palpatine didn't care which. He simply needed to remove Maul from the equation, one way or another. The clone troopers, led by Captain Rex and his squad, fought bravely against the insurgents, but with Order 66 in play, Ahsoka found herself battling not only Maul, but also her own soldiers. Maul, ever the survivor, managed to slip away in the confusion, escaping the clutches of both Ahsoka and the clones. Palpatine's gamble had paid off. Maul was no longer an immediate threat, and with the chaos on Mandalore, there would be no one left to expose his secret identity as Darth Sidious to the Senate or the Jedi. Anakin entered Palpatine's office, his mind heavy with the weight of everything that had transpired. Obi-Wan was confronting General Grievous, and the war seemed to be approaching its conclusion. Anakin hoped this would bring an end to the chaos, but as he stepped into the Chancellor's chambers, he could feel a tension in the air. Palpatine turned to greet him, a warm smile on his face, but his eyes held a trace of something deeper, something more troubled. Anakin, Palpatine said, his voice soft but deliberate. I've just heard the news about General Grievous. Obi-Wan is facing him now, which means the end of this war may be within our grasp. Anakin nodded, though his own feelings were conflicted. Yes, Chancellor. If Grievous is defeated, it could mean peace. The war could finally be over. Palpatine's smile faded slightly as he walked toward the large windows overlooking Coruscant. That is good news, of course, but I am not entirely at ease, my friend. He turned to face Anakin, his expression grave. There are other concerns. The Jedi Council has grown increasingly erratic, their behavior more troubling with each passing day. I fear they are no longer acting in the best interests of the Republic. Anakin stiffened, unsure of where this was going. I... Don't know about that, Chancellor. The Council has its flaws, but they still fight for the Republic. Palpatine took a step closer, his voice dropping to a whisper. Do they, Anakin? They asked you to spy on me, didn't they? To go against your own conscience. Is that the behavior of an Order fighting for the Republic? Anakin's jaw tightened. He couldn't deny it? Exactly. And it isn't just you they've turned on. I have reason to believe that they are plotting something far more dangerous an attempt to seize control of the Republic itself. He paused, gauging Anakin's reaction. That is why I am calling an emergency Senate meeting today. The truth must come to light, but I need your help, Anakin. My help? Palpatine placed a hand on Anakin's shoulder, his tone softening. Yes. I do not want to paint all the Jedi as villains. I know there are those you care about, and I do not want to see them suffer needlessly. I only ask that you speak your truth. You know what the Council has done, how they've manipulated events. The Republic needs to hear it from you, Anakin. Not all Jedi are bad, but the bad fruit, it must be dealt with. Anakin hesitated, his mind racing. He didn't want to turn on the Jedi, but Palpatine's words made sense. The Council had asked him to betray the Chancellor. They didn't trust him. Could he really trust them? I'll be there, Anakin finally said, though a part of him still felt uneasy. Good. The Republic will be grateful for your honesty, Anakin. We must root out the corruption where it lies. The Senate chamber was filled to capacity. Every senator and delegate gathered to witness the emergency session. Anakin stood beside Palpatine, his eyes scanning the room. The tension in the air was palpable. Palpatine stepped forward to address the assembly, his voice calm and measured, but laced with a sense of urgency. Senators, we gather today not just to discuss the state of the war, but to address a growing concern within our very government. Palpatine paused, allowing the weight of his words to settle over the room. The Jedi Order, once the defenders of peace and justice, have become a danger to the very Republic they swore to protect. Murmurs spread through the chamber, but Palpatine continued, his tone growing more serious. The Jedi Council has been acting in secret, manipulating the war for their own ends. They have even gone so far as to ask one of their own, Anakin Skywalker, to spy on me, the leader of the Republic, without cause or justification. 
At this, the room fell silent, all eyes turning toward Anakin. Palpatine gestured toward him. Anakin, please tell the Senate what the Jedi Council asked of you. Anakin felt a knot tighten in his chest. He knew he had to tell the truth, but the way Palpatine framed it made everything sound so much worse. He stepped forward, taking a deep breath. They asked me to spy on Chancellor Palpatine, Anakin said, his voice steady. The Council didn't trust him. They wanted me to find out what he was planning. Gasps rippled through the chamber, and Anakin felt the weight of their judgment. Palpatine turned back to the Senate, his expression one of pain disappointment. You see, even the Jedi's own cannot deny their betrayal. They have sought to undermine the Republic, to manipulate its leaders for their own purposes. One of the senators, a tall figure from Malastari, stood and asked, Jedi Skywalker, has the Jedi Council ever made decisions without consulting the Senate? Have they acted on their own authority? Anakin hesitated, but knew he had to answer honestly. Yes, they've made decisions in secret, without consulting the Senate or the Republic's leadership. More whispers echoed through the chamber, and Anakin could feel the tide turning. Another senator stood. Do you believe the Jedi are truly loyal to the Republic, or are they serving their own agenda? Anakin swallowed hard. I... I don't know. Palpatine stepped in, his voice sympathetic but firm. Anakin is a good man, a true servant of the Republic. But even he has been forced to question the Jedi's loyalty. The room erupted in outrage. Senators were shouting over each other, demanding answers, calling for action. But Palpatine was not finished. He raised his hands, calming the room as he prepared his final stroke. My fellow senators, I wish it were only internal betrayal we faced. But the Jedi have also turned on our soldiers. Even now, they are attacking Republic forces. With a wave of his hand, a hollow feet appeared above the Senate chamber. It was live footage from Mandalore, recorded from the helmet of a clone trooper. The video showed Ahsoka Tano fighting off clones, her lightsabers flashing as she defended herself. But to the untrained eye, it looked like a Jedi assaulting loyal Republic soldiers. The troopers fell, one by one, as Ahsoka's blades struck down their ranks. This is what the Jedi have become, Palpatine said, his voice filled with sorrow. They are no longer defenders of the Republic. They are enemies, turning against those who fight to protect us. The footage played on, showing the chaos of the battle on Mandalore. The Senate was in an uproar, the Senator's outrage growing with every second. Senators, Palpatine said, his voice rising above the noise. The Jedi have betrayed us. They have turned against the Republic. I must act now to protect our democracy. With that, Palpatine raised his hand high. For the safety and security of the Republic, I am enacting order. 66. The chamber erupted in applause and shouts of approval as Palpatine's words echoed across the Senate. Anakin stood frozen, his heart pounding in his chest. The order had been given, and the Jedi, his friends, his comrades, were now the enemies of the Republic. Palpatine turned to Anakin, his voice low and filled with a dark, quiet satisfaction. You have done your duty, Anakin. The Republic will be safe now. After the Senate meeting, Anakin rushed to Palpatine's office, his mind swirling with confusion and doubt. The image of Ahsoka fighting off clone troopers played on repeat in his mind. He knew her. She would never attack clones unless there was something wrong, something they didn't understand. The footage from Mandalore couldn't be the full story. There had to be some kind of misunderstanding. But the Senate had been convinced, and now Order 66 had been issued. As Anakin entered Palpatine's office, the Chancellor stood waiting for him, his expression calm but calculating as if he had expected this meeting. Ah, uh, Anakin, I knew you would come. You did well in the Senate today. The Republic owes you a debt of gratitude for your honesty. But Anakin barely heard the compliment. His thoughts were consumed by the footage he had seen. Chancellor, there has to be some kind of mistake. The footage of Ahsoka, that can't be right. I know her. She wouldn't just attack clones like that unless there was something wrong. It's out of character. She's no traitor. Palpatine's expression softened, his voice filled with sympathy. I understand your concern, Anakin. Ahsoka was your apprentice, and I know you care for her deeply. But the footage does not lie. The clone trooper's helmets recorded the entire event. It's difficult to deny what we saw. Anakin shook his head, pacing the room in frustration. But you don't understand, Chancellor. Ahsoka would never do something like that without reason. There has to be more to it. Something we're missing. Palpatine walked toward him, his tone soft and reassuring. I will look deeper into it, Anakin, for your sake. I'll have my best men investigate the situation on Mandalore. I don't want you to feel that I'm acting rashly. But you must understand, 
Order 66 has been enacted for the safety of the Republic. Only the Jedi who refuse to comply, those who resist, will face consequences. If Ahsoka is innocent, we will discover the truth. Anakin paused, his hands clenching into fists. He wanted to believe Palpatine. He wanted to believe that Ahsoka would be safe, that she would never betray the Republic. But the footage had been so damning. Deep down, though, something still didn't sit right. Thank you, Chancellor. Anakin said finally, though his voice was heavy with uncertainty. I just, I can't shake the feeling that this is all wrong. Palpatine smiled, a flicker of triumph hidden beneath his kind facade. I understand your conflict, Anakin. But you have to trust that I have the Republic's best interests at heart. The Jedi who cooperate will not be harmed. And as for Ahsoka, I will make sure her case is handled with care. Anakin nodded, though the pit in his stomach remained. I appreciate that. Palpatine's expression shifted, his tone becoming more urgent. I understand your conflict, Anakin. But you have to trust that I have the Republic's best interests at heart. The Jedi who cooperate will not be harmed. And as for Ahsoka, I will make sure her case is handled with care. Anakin frowned, his mind still partially on Ahsoka, but he knew this was a critical moment. The war had to end. What do you need me to do? Palpatine's voice was steady, calm. Now, my friend, we must bring an end to this war once and for all. The Jedi have been dealt with, but there is still the matter of the Separatist leaders. They are hiding on Mustafar, and their influence over the galaxy must be eliminated if we are to ensure lasting peace. Anakin took a deep breath, the weight of the request settling on him. But this was his chance to end the war, to finally bring peace. He could do it. I'll go. I'll finish this war. Anakin said, determination creeping back into his voice. Palpatine placed a hand on Anakin's shoulder, his voice laced with false sincerity. Go to Mustafa, Anakin. Wipe out the Separatist leaders. Without them, the war will be over and the Republic can begin its healing process. Only then can we rebuild from the ashes. Anakin nodded once more before turning to leave. His mind was still clouded with doubts about Ahsoka, but his mission was clear now. The Separatist leaders had to be eliminated, and the war had to end. As Anakin made his way out of Palpatine's office and toward his ship, his focus shifted to Mustafar. The fate of the galaxy rested on his shoulders, and nothing, not even his doubts, could stop him from completing his task. With Anakin en route to Mustafar, tasked with eliminating the remaining Separatist leaders, Palpatine's plans were set in motion. Anakin's absence allowed Palpatine to act without interference, executing Order 66 across the galaxy. The clone troopers, loyal to the Republic, turned on their Jedi commanders, and across countless worlds, the Jedi were caught off guard and mercilessly hunted down. On Coruscant, the Jedi Temple became the epicenter of the carnage. Clones stormed the halls, systematically eliminating Jedi, younglings, Padawans, knights, and masters alike. The sounds of battle echoed through the once peaceful temple, and the light of countless lightsabers flickered and faded. But unlike the original timeline, the temple was not entirely defenseless. Master Mace Windu, along with several other Jedi Masters who had survived the initial wave of attacks, stood their ground, fighting fiercely against the clones. Their presence made a critical difference. Windu's mastery of Vapod allowed him to cut through waves of troopers, channeling their aggression and turning it back on them. Alongside him, other Jedi who hadn't been present in the original events fought valiantly, determined to protect as many lives as possible. Despite their efforts, the temple fell and many Jedi were lost. But thanks to Windu and the others, more Jedi escaped than in the original timeline. Survivors fled into hiding, scattered across the galaxy, hoping to regroup and find a way to continue their fight against the darkness that had engulfed the Republic. In the aftermath of the temple raid, Mace Windu, now more certain than ever of Palpatine's true nature, made his way to the Senate building. With everything he had witnessed, the suspicions he had harbored for so long were confirmed. Palpatine was the Sith Lord. It was time to end his reign once and for all. Inside the Senate chamber, the final confrontation began. Palpatine, sensing Windu's approach, was ready, but he had underestimated the Jedi Master's resolve. As they clashed, the dark side energy of the Sith met the unyielding will of Vapad. Windu's fighting style, designed to channel and exploit the darkness of his opponent, gave him an edge even against the power of Darth Sidious. The duel was fierce and intense. The 
chamber itself shaking with the raw energy of the force. With every strike, Windu pushed Palpatine back, forcing the Sith Lord to realize that he was losing control. The Dark Lord's lightning crackled and sparked, the red of his lightsaber clashing against Windu's purple blade. But Windu was relentless, unyielding, and in a final, decisive moment, he disarmed Palpatine and struck him down. The Sith Lord's reign had ended, but the Republic was left in chaos, leaderless, and still under the shadow of Order 66. Meanwhile, on Mustafar, Anakin had completed his mission. He eliminated the Separatist leaders, bringing an official end to the war. But as he stood over their lifeless bodies, a sense of unease washed over him. The galaxy was supposed to be at peace, but something felt wrong. With the war over, he quickly made his way back to Coruscant, only to find destruction. As his ship approached the planet, Anakin could sense the darkness, the echoes of pain and loss. The Jedi Temple was in ruins. The halls where he had trained, where he had spent his life, were now empty, haunted by the ghosts of those who had been lost. Anakin's heart sank as he walked through the remnants of the battle, realizing the full extent of what had happened. Hundreds of Jedi, his friends, his family, had been killed. The peace he had fought for had been shattered. But when Anakin learned of what had transpired in the Senate, of how Mace Windu had confronted and killed Palpatine, his mind was filled with even more confusion and guilt. He had testified against the Jedi, believing he was telling the truth, but that truth had been manipulated and twisted to justify their slaughter. Now he was left to grapple with the consequences. In the eyes of the Republic, the Jedi were still traitors. Palpatine's death did little to change the perception that had been carefully cultivated, and with the Senate still believing the Jedi had been plotting to overthrow the government, the surviving Jedi were forced to flee. They couldn't remain on Coruscant, not when they were still seen as enemies. Mace Windu and the remaining Jedi gathered those they could, retreating to distant worlds to regroup and rebuild. When Anakin attempted to join them, he was shunned. The Council could not forget that it was his words, his testimony, that had given Palpatine the ammunition he needed to convince the Senate to turn against them. Anakin tried to explain that he had been telling the truth, that he had never intended to betray the Order, but it was too late. The Jedi survivors turned him away, leaving him to face the consequences of his actions. Over the following months, the Republic began to learn the full extent of Palpatine's deception. Hidden recordings, messages, and documents revealed that he had orchestrated the entire war, manipulating both the Republic and the Separatists to serve his own ends. As the truth emerged, the Republic began to see the Jedi not as traitors, but as victims of a grand scheme that had almost destroyed the galaxy. The Senate reached out to the Jedi, seeking reconciliation. They offered to help rebuild the Order, to bring the Jedi back into the fold of the Republic. But the Jedi, now more cautious and wary of political entanglement, chose to remain separate. They had been nearly wiped out once before, and they would not allow themselves to be used as pawns in a political game again. The Jedi Order would be rebuilt, but it would be independent, focused on the true purpose of peace and balance in the Force, free from the influence of governments. As for Anakin, he returned turned to Padme and their children. He had been a hero of the Republic, a champion of the Jedi, and now he was left to navigate a world where he belonged to neither. He was a man caught between two worlds, shunned by the Jedi, distanced from the Republic. But for the first time in years, there was peace, and Anakin found solace in his family. He devoted himself to raising Luke and Leia, ensuring they grew up in a galaxy free from the chaos and war that had defined his life. The galaxy began to heal, the Jedi slowly rebuilding from the ashes, the Republic learning from the mistakes of the past. And though Anakin had been shunned, he was left with the peace he had sought for so long, a chance to raise his family in a galaxy no longer torn apart by war, even if he was still haunted by the choices that had led him there. And so, the story ended with a galaxy transformed by war, deception, and loss, but slowly finding its way back to peace. The Jedi would rise again, separate but stronger, and the Republic, having seen the consequences of corruption and manipulation, would strive to rebuild a new future. And Anakin, once a hero and then a pariah, found his own path forward, not as a Jedi or a soldier, but as a father in a galaxy finally at rest.